Hi and welcome. My name is Brian Parsa. I'm the coordinator of the Residency and Ministry Program for our CalPAC conference. This is the process that all of our provisional members um, in our conference are a part of. This is a short uh, video training um, that will give you a sense about the mentor-mentee program that is a part of the provisional membership. Uh, so you're receiving this uh, email link because either you are a provisional member of the CalPAC conference or you have been asked by a provisional member to be uh, their mentor uh, through the ordination process. This uh, mentor-mentee um, arrangement is part of the Book of Discipline mandates for all provisional members. All provisional members uh, in the United Methodist Church across the denomination must have a mentor uh, through their provisional time. So we've put this video together to show you where to get some uh, resources for being a mentor or to developing the mentor-mentee relationship. We hope this is helpful to you. On the screen right now you can see my name, my email, my phone number. If after you watch this video you have any questions at all, um, I invite you to uh, give me a call, send me an email. I'd be happy to answer uh, any questions you have. Especially for the mentors that are listening to this, uh, we thank you for your time. We understand that you are busy, um, that you have taken on more responsibility um, in doing this. But certainly, uh, we believe that uh, your time uh, working with our provisional members will be a blessing, not only to them, not only to the churches and the future generations they serve, but we hope so too will it be a blessing to you as you have the opportunity uh, to a mentor another. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to click out of this and just go to the conference website. I'm going to walk you through where you can find lots of different uh, resources out there. So first, uh, this is a conference website, simply uh, calpacumc.org. If you go to ministries um, over here, you will find uh, ordained ministry, the board of ordained ministry. Um, that is where all of our information is held. Now, you're going to want to look um, possibly uh, one of two places. For provisional members, there is some uh, information for you here, and, and really it's a duplicate of information that is found elsewhere. Um, primarily, this is what we're going to be talking about today, cl clergy mentor timeline and process. Um, I'm going to go back to this screen. You can see also in this same screen, there's a section called Mentors. If you click on that, uh, you may be familiar that there's two different kind of mentors that we use in relationship to the Board of Ordained Ministry. One is a candidacy mentor. Those are mentors that serve prior to uh, provisional membership. And then there are provisional uh, members mentors. And that's what we're talking about today. Um, you can uh, see that there's a, a number of pieces of information here. Let me go to the most detail-oriented of those first, and that is this clergy mentor mentee timeline. So for you provisional members, just to remind you of the timeline, um, you self-select a, a deacon or elder, who's in full connection uh, membership with the California Pacific Conference. You do that before uh, September 15th, the year that you're commissioned. You send that uh, name to uh, Kathy Wilson, who's our board administrator. And then you'll get a return email back saying that that person um, is, uh, has been assigned your mentor. Number two is this training that you're doing now. Um, and uh, number four down here is um, go, what you're going to do next. And I'll explain where you're going to find this clergy mentoring manual. Also, I'll explain how you're going to form a covenant agreement. Now, just to be clear, every time uh, when, when you are the first year you're commissioned, you need to develop a covenant agreement with your mentor. If throughout your provisional process, your mentor stays the same, then you only need to do the covenant agreement the first time. But if for whatever reason you have changed mentors throughout the years, um, with each new mentor, you need to do a new uh, 
uh, covenant agreement with that mentor. That covenant agreement is uh, required by November 1st. You're going to uh, develop it, sign it, uh, both mentor and mentee, uh, send that uh, signed paper via email uh, to Kathy Wilson. Um, and then each year, uh, at the end of the year, uh, by June 1st, there is a report that is due uh, describing your mentor-mentee relationship. The way we encourage this to happen is that the mentee would write the report. You're answering some simple questions I'll show you in, in a moment, but it's probably a half-page document. This is who my mentor is. This is how many times we met. This is a form of what uh, we did together. This is how it was helpful to me. You sign it as the mentee. The mentor signs it. It gets sent electronically uh, then to Kathy Wilson. The important thing about this is that this is one of the mandated processes for provisional membership in the Book of Discipline. Um, and CalPAC, we have decided not to assign you mentors. We would rather you find a mentor that you think would be most helpful to you. Um, and so that means that you, once you find that, that mentor, um, that you can work with that person. These relationships are also not evaluative. So your mentor is not uh, writing a letter to the Board of Ordained Ministry about your work or how you've been doing or, or uh, any evaluative conversation at, at all. This is a safe place for you as a mentee to be working with someone who's a full connection elder or deacon. Essentially, you're working with someone who's been through this process already, and they've been serving uh, successfully um, in ministry. And so you get a chance to uh, learn from this person. So this is the timeline. Um, I'm just going to go back to where we were before. Um, uh, this is some information about that annual report. If you click on that, you can see um, uh, sort of the process of writing that uh, annual report. Um, again, it is descriptive, non-evaluative in nature, as your entire relationship with your mentor mentee is non-evaluative. Um, in nature. Um, here, if you go to this clergy mentors link, you can see that the Board of, of uh, Higher Education and Ministry has put together some information for us. Um, and there's a number of different things here that you might just uh, look through. Uh, job description, and let me just uh, highlight a couple things um, here. Your uh, responsibilities as the um, mentor um, is uh, fairly simple. Again, you're not evaluating um, these uh, men the people who you are mentoring. Um, you're simply coming alongside of them and uh, supporting them and encouraging them in their ministry. I want to point out in particular this clergy mentor manual, um, and I'm going to scroll down to its page 15, and you can find this in, in the table of contents as well. And this is a page that talks about forming a covenant. And essentially the reason we want a covenant agreement is because we want the mentor and mentee to be in full agreement as they begin this relationship, what they're ex expected. So not that one would expect to meet uh, every other week and the other one ex is expecting to meet three times a year. Those are very different expectations. Um, and we have all kinds of different relationships that have developed between mentors and mentees. Some of them meet together and it's more like a covenant uh, kind of ministry to one another, sharing the joys and concerns, um, the uh, successes and failures of ministry, praying for one another. Some of them are more focused around uh, writing papers and preparing for interviews in the provisional uh, process as you move to full connection. Some of, some of our mentors, mentees, will pick a book together to read um, about a ministry topic and they'll discuss that. So it's really what you decide and what would be best um, in your relationship. And so if you read through this, they'll give you um, some ideas about uh, forming a covenant, um, answer these questions together, and then you would simply write a statement um, that would uh, be signed by you both. And that's what your uh, covenant agreement would be. So, 
again, in this resource, uh, especially for the mentors, um, you can read all kinds of information about uh, what's expected of you and, and ways that uh, mentoring best happens. I suspect that you have been chosen uh, to be a mentor because the person who's chosen you has already found you to be helpful um, in their ministry or has heard that you are helpful in uh, the ministry of others. So, uh, again, back to uh, this website, you can um, find uh, all of those links that you would need for a successful mentor-mentee relationship here, um, and that is on the Calpac, uh umc.org website under ordained ministry once you click there it's going to bring you here mentors i encourage you to take a look here provisional members take a look here again if you have any questions at all about this the nature of this relationship or the particular processes that you are going through i invite you to uh, send me an email give me a call um, here's my uh, information here Again, we, we are thankful. Uh, we celebrate with those of you who are in the provisional process and who are moving through this process of ordination as God is calling and uh, continuing to lead you for the mentors out there. Again, we are thankful for the time that you've taken uh, to share with um, our colleagues. We believe that you will be blessed by this, that certainly those who you are mentoring will be blessed, but also many generations of people who are future pastors will be in ministry too will be blessed. God bless. I look forward to hearing from you should you have any questions.